Okay, this video is how is Plato's cave relevant to nutrition and health? All right, Plato's cave comes from the book authored by Plato, you know, back uh, in the late 300s uh, before Christ. Um, Plato had been sad because, you know, Socrates had been executed in 399 BC. He was sad because, you know, Athens had lost to Sparta. He had tried to be a playwright, was unsuccessful, tried to be a politician, was unsuccessful. So he wrote the Republic in the form of a play, meaning a dialogue. And he even called his dialogues of working towards truth, he called them a dialectic and felt that was a great way to get to the truth. And his hero character was Socrates, his friend, but also like the star of his dialogues. So Plato said what life is like for most people is as if they were in a cave, chained to the wall, and then the storytellers, the puppet masters, uh, walk back and forth with puppets, and they project shadows onto the wall. There's a fire over here, so that leads to the light to project the shadows on the wall. And the average masses, they just believe whatever nonsense the storytellers project on the wall that tells them how to think, tells them how to behave. And rarely there'll be a person who decides to try to get out of this uh, conundrum and they escape from their chains. And, you know, the chains are really more figurative than literal. A person who motivates themselves that they want to try to escape from all this, that there might be some other reality out there, can climb out of the cave into the light. So when they first climb out of the cave into the light, the sun is so bright that it it's, it's almost painful to their eyes. And then they ask themselves, are they dreaming? Are they, are they going crazy? Because they see absolute truth. What we see in here is sort of a manufactured truth. And so because of that, it takes them a while to adjust gradually to the outside world. And then quite often they'll feel sorry for the person still stuck in the cave and they'll want to come back down into the cave. So this right here would be Socrates, for example. So he comes back down into the cave and tries to tell the other ones, look, you're looking at just, you know, false images, mirages, delusions, incorrect information. There's a real world out there with a real sun, and it's great, and you should come check it out. You don't have to be fat, sick, and stupid. And the people are like, are you crazy? You're nuts. Also, when he first comes back into the cave, he's so used to the sunlight, it's very difficult for him to see in the cave. So that's another reason why he won't see as clearly the things that are of the cave, and the people will think he's a little nuts, and quite often they'll, they'll start to insult him and even react violently against him, and... Uh, Plato felt that this is what it was like to try to teach philosophy and what I think it's like to teach nutrition to the public. And Plato was, you know, very sad. The greatest man he'd ever known in his life was Socrates, and Socrates had been executed for, you know, disrupt, disrupting the public, you know, disrespecting the gods by the standards of that day and the politics of that day. Okay. So now we'll go into a little more of the, the detail about it. That was sort of the backstory. Um, what is a liberal education? A liberal education, educari, to lead oneself out of, is a way to free oneself, to escape from the cave. Um, a nice quote from uh, Ashley Brilliant. He says, life is the only game where the object of the game is to figure out the rules. Um, let's see. Okay, Voltaire. He says that, it is difficult to free a fool from the chains he loves. Yeah, so that's why you run into people who say, I'd rather die than stop eating meat and all that kind of stuff. Um, Goethe, the, the German, he said, None are more hopelessly enslaved than those who falsely believe that they are free. The truth has been kept from their minds by masters who rule them with lies. They feed them on falsehoods until wrong looks like right in their eyes. Yeah, that's the typical person. Whatever is repeated publicly enough times, they will just believe it. They have no judgment. And that's, and okay, Plato, no one is more hated than he who tells the truth. So the intelligent thing to do is to be skeptical. Always be skeptical. And then try to figure it out for yourself. I mean, sometimes you have to trust stuff. But what I mean by that is you should be skeptical until proven otherwise. Look at all the stuff that's been approved in the food supply for grass, you know, generally regarded as safe. Tons of things, like that recent coating for fruits and vegetables that's ridiculously toxic chemicals that was approved as generally regarded as safe okay where's the studies i've never heard of them or seen them then it was also approved to be put into organic food well then what that means is it obviously shouldn't be in grass and it shouldn't be in organic so it's obviously means that most likely the persons who are supposed to make those decisions are just paid off and you see that all the time all the medical journals are bogus all the ones that talk about drugs, they're always just paid off because that's where the money comes from. So we're becoming a society guided by money rather than by true ethics. And that's why I think, you know, you can't fix these problems until you go back to Bible ethics. 
Uh, but anyways, let's continue on with this. The average person is happy in their ignorance. They don't really care that much about truth. They just care about what do they need to do to get through the day, get through the week, get through the month. Uh, but quite often, they, by not being aware of reality, they end up making wrong choices, and it leads to negative consequences in the long run. Okay, who are some guides to the sunlight and truth? Okay, first a quote by Arthur Herman. Arthur Herman wrote a great book. It's called um, The Light in the Cave. It, it's the best philosophy book I've ever read. I've read tons of philosophy books. Um, and it, the light in the cave is basically a comparison of Aristotle as the light and Plato as the cave. So paradoxically, Plato himself is one of these old-time philosophers who says that you have to lie to the public. He calls it the noble lie is how you should govern the public, that the average public people are just too stupid. Because he felt that any public that would allow their best man Socrates to be executed is just too stupid to really make any progress with. And he felt that the truth was only for rare few minority of individuals who are trained in the dialectic, you know, dial dialogue working towards truth, and that they would be the ones who could climb out of the cage. But for other people, it was just forget it. It was, it was a hopeless waste of time. Okay, um, so who are some of the famous guiding lights who have been, you know, likened metaphorically to being the light out of the cave? You know, of course, Socrates, sort of the saint of philosophy, Aristotle in his day. Aristotle is really the best of the ancient Greeks. Um, he was forced to flee Athens after the death of Alexander the Great and died soon thereafter. Cicero was the great light of the Roman Republic. He was later killed by Mark Anthony. Uh, Jesus Christ, of course, uh, founder of Christianity, preached freedom and forgiveness. He himself was crucified. St. Paul saw the light, was executed. So, unfortunately, a lot of these guys don't do so. Look at, uh, look at Semmelweis, the guy that said, that, you know, you can dramatically reduce uh, maternal mortality uh, after uh, delivery just by washing hands. He got fired from his job, and he was then eventually sent to a mental institution. Okay, that's for, you know, making a great invention to save millions and millions and millions of women. That was how he got treated for that. Boethius had translated classical Greek works, including the works of Aristotle, into uh, Latin, and he, you know, didn't do so well with his barbarian ruler. The Irish monks who kept all these Latin manuscripts alive, like Boethius' works, the Bible, Cicero, Virgil, they kept it in print for Christendom. And then later on, with a syncretic approach, St. Thomas Aquinas really uh, clarified a lot of stuff in Aristotle's work. And um, that led to the whole scholasticism movement, which is really the beginning of the scientific movement in the world. You know, And it came right out of Catholicism and the work of the scholastics. That, that's proven. You can look that up if you like. Anyways, Newton is great. Now, here's a real nice quote from John Ruskin. John Ruskin was sort of a leading figure in the Victorian Renaissance. And he was a wealthy guy, great speaker, great art critic, decent artist himself. And what he said was, you know, the industrial age in England, where all the buildings were covered in suit. He then went to visit the medieval cathedrals in France, the beautiful Catholic cathedrals, and they were so magnificent. He said... How could we say this was the Dark Ages? We're living in the Dark Ages. Everyone's all filthy and dirty. All our buildings are polluted. And these people made these magnificent buildings, you know, the greatest buildings of all time. Uh, Ayn Rand, the smartest woman who ever lived, you know, her family fled from uh, Russia in the early 1900s. And uh, what I'm getting at is these are all truth tellers, and all of them had a pretty rough time. Uh, she was like tons of people. You know, more often than not, the most common thing I hear about Ayn Rand is, oh, I hate her. But you haven't read her, you know, that they maybe have one tiny little thing they heard taken out of context. And she also does say some things that are kind of obnoxious. That is true. But I love all the good things that she did. She said the most important minority is the individual. The individual is a minority of one. If the individual has, uh, you know, rights, then everybody has rights. Uh, Alexander Solzhenitsyn, in prison for a while in Russia, and then exiled, barely escaped with his life several times. You can learn a lot from him. Ann Coulter, she's like the funniest woman who ever lived. Uh, she's a great writer. You, you'd be amazed how funny and clever her books are. And, of course, she's like one of the most widely hated people. So anybody who's really good, especially for women, it's almost, it's almost impossible for a woman to be a real powerful writer and not catch all this sort of, uh, you know, hate labels. Um, the best book, like I said, was Light in the Cave by Arthur Herman, all about the influence and the effects of the work from Plato and Aristotle. The best song, and okay, also Plato felt the dialectic was a ticket out of the cage. If you can have intelligent conversations about subjects, um, that's one of the reasons why if you want 
to really have people that thrive. You need to have free speech, and you have to encourage people to have conversations. That's why the ancient Greeks were so great. That's a big part of why the Renaissance was so great. Okay, um, the best song, about, well, sort of indirectly related to this, would be Break Every Chain, sung by Tasha Cobbs. So anyways, uh, Plato's Cave is considered by many uh, as the greatest allegory ever written in the history of Western civilization. It's pretty useful and extraordinary. Hope that's helpful.